What is happening guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 news update. So we've got a few topics to cover here in this video, starting with the PS5. So a developer known as Euro Alley came out with a Redis payload for the PS5. So Redis is something that runs on the PS5. I've not really heard of it before, but apparently according to Wikipedia anyway, it is a remote dictionary server, uh, which is an in-memory data structure store used as a distributed in-memory key value database, cache and message broker with optional durability. So, you know, if you understand what the hell that means, then that's apparently what Redis is. So it sounds like some kind of database software that the PS5 is using. And this PS5 payload seems to allow you to remotely connect to that Redis server that's running on the PS5, and then you can issue commands. So just to give you a little example here, if I go ahead on my PS5 and launch into the exploit, so you would just launch Spectre's exploit like you normally would if you were going to load, say, the FTP payload. And then we switch over to the computer. You use a payload injector like Netcat GUI. You take the Redis payload, you throw it into the payload injector. You enter the PS5's IP address and port number being 9020 and you inject the payload. And when you do that, you can see you get a little notification that pops up there on the PS5, just like with FTP. And then to actually remote into Redis, you need to use some kind of a Linux based machine. There probably is a way to do it through Windows. I haven't really checked, but I'm just using the uh, Windows subsystem for Linux running a Ubuntu instance. Then you just install Redis by typing in sudo apt install Redis. At least that's the command on Ubuntu based systems. So we can go ahead and do that and that will install Redis. So once we've done that, we can then connect to the PS5 through Redis by typing in Redis dash CLI space and then dash H for host. And we're going to put in the IP address of our PS5. When in my case, that is 137.113. And then dash P for the port number. And the port number is 1004. So we enter that, we hit enter. And as you can see, we have successfully connected. And you'll notice you get a bunch of notifications that pop up there on the PS5 as well, once you establish a connection. So you can enter commands like ping, and it should come back with pong, which means that it got a response. Uh, you can also type in things like info server to get the information about the current instance. So there we go, server, startup time. It's got all the information in there, including things like the config file where that's located in the app zero directory, redis.config. So you can access the Redis server that's running on the PS5 remotely from your computer. And another thing that Redis is capable of is running some basic Lua script commands. So you can type in the word eval space and then you can enter a script and load an actual script on the actual ps5 itself and you can run basic lua scripts with this so for example we can type in the word uh, return and then i'll return just the word test to show that it actually works and then you can see it replies with test so it executed that on the ps5 itself so you can run some basic lua scripts but the lua scripts are protected for example you don't have access to the actual global functions so why exactly is this useful? Well, at the moment, there's nothing really, you know, special about this. There's nothing we can really do with Redis right now, nothing that's been discovered. But what's interesting about it is that, of course, it can load some basic Lua scripts and it's also running an older version of Redis, not the latest version. So it could be uh, vulnerable to potential exploits. There has been exploits found in Redis in the past and, uh, you know, it's possible that some of these vulnerabilities could be explored on the PS5. Through Redis, so it's essentially like another attack vector that PS5 hackers could look into to seeing if they could find other ways to exploit the system through Redis. So that's the potential of it anyway. But at the moment, um, it is you know protected. You don't have access to those global functions uh, with the Lua scripts, so it's very nerfed at the moment. Uh, there's not a whole lot that you can really do. But you know, it's another potential attack vector for PS5 hackers to look at and maybe they'll find vulnerabilities in the PS5 Redis implementation in future. So that's what we have there with the PS5. So let's go ahead and move on to the PS4 real quick. So moving on to PS4 news, we do in fact have a new beta release of Gold Hen by Sistro. So this is Gold Hen version 2.2.5 B7, so beta 7. So this particular version brings back a long lost feature that was removed from a previous version I think it was 2.2.3 beta. So the beta releases of 2.2.3, .2 
which had the title ID label. So you could actually show the title ID and app version on the home menu of all the apps that are on your home menu. Now this feature was removed in newer versions of Gold Hen because there was a bug when you had lots of apps installed that would slow down the renderer on the PS4 and it would cause lag. Uh, so this feature was unfortunately removed. However, it has now returned here in this beta build and will hopefully be coming in the official release. So as you can see here, he says, Hi everyone, as promised, I reactivated the labels with the app titles with an optimization to avoid rendering lag. And thanks to Shinigami and CTN, support for cheats in MC4 format has also been added. So thanks to everyone for their support as always. So if you want access to the actual payload, you can send Sistro a donation. I'll leave the donation link down in the video description, but it's also freely accessible on Chameleon's host as well if you want to load it on your PS4. So if we switch over to the PS4 here, I'm going to head to the internet browser. So just to show you guys, if you head to kmeps4.site, so kmeps4.site, that will take you to Chameleon's host, which has the payload. You can go to the 9.00 firmware, and then we can go to the manual host or the auto host. So I believe it should be available here. This does say it's 2.2.5 B2, not B7. I don't know if that's a typo, but uh, that should be the latest version because Chameleon did say he added it to his host. So it should be in here, at least by the time you're watching this. I've, got, I've gone ahead and downloaded the payload manually from Sistro, and I'm going to go ahead and load it using my Raspberry Pi 02W with the auto USB injection. If you want to learn how to update your Raspberry Pi chips or your ESP chips that do the auto USB inject with the latest Gold Hen payload, then I've already done a tutorial for that a while ago. So I'll leave it linked in the video description and in the cards in the top right hand corner. So there we go, USB emulation happening. And the USB storage device's file system is unsupported. So it auto injects the USB image and then we can successfully load gold hen up on our system so 2.2.5 b7 loaded okay so there we go we've got the payload loaded so if we head into the gold hen settings you can see that everything looks normal so he's added the title id labels into the cheat settings so if we go into cheat settings you can see we've got show title id and of course we can show just the title id only which just shows the title ids there on the bottom of the app or of course we have the option as before to select only the app version so that you just get the version that the game is currently running on or the current app so you've got the version right there or of course you can show both by going back into cheat settings and selecting title id and app version so there we get the title id and the app version on the home screen so this is a very useful feature that i know a lot of people were still using the older beta version that had this included instead of the latest versions of gold hen even even with the instability because they liked it so much. And I really like this feature. Just having the title IDs here is very, very handy just so that you can see at a glance what the title ID of your game is in case you need to download an update for it and you need to know what the title ID is or you're trying to you know, run a particular cheat and you need to know the title ID of the game that you have in order to install and run the correct cheat. So all of that is now included. But anyway, if I hit options, you can see we've got the gold hen cheat menu. So this is basically what you would have to access in order to be able to get the title ID, which shows up there in the top uh, before. Whereas now, of course, it's all just available here on the home screen on your apps so that you can quickly access the title ID. So very, very useful feature. And obviously that issue that was causing it to lag in previous versions should now be fixed. So another thing that's been added in this new version of Gold Hen is, of course, support for the MC4 cheat format. So right now, the Gold Hen Cheat Manager, I don't have any cheats installed for this game right now, unfortunately, but the Gold Hen Cheat Manager supports a number of different cheat formats. The original cheat format, of course, is the JSON file format, which is the format that the PS4 Trainer by Tyler Mods used. And those are kind of some basic cheats. Like that format, typically, you were only able to do things like enable or disable something or set something to a particular value and you know choose between two different values basically however there's more advanced cheat software out there there's like debugging software and stuff by uh, Shin shinigami if i'm saying that right probably not or ctn so these debugging tools can allow you to make more advanced cheats for the ps4 and you know you can save them to a file and they use different file formats for those cheats so now of course the cheat menu in gold hen now supports another one of these formats, the MC4 format, 
which means we could see more cheats coming to Gold Hen, as well as more advanced cheats that you can enable on the Gold Hen cheat menu as well. So that is another good improvement that's been added there in this new version. Of course, this is still a beta build. So if you are going to use this build, you might run into potential instability issues or crashes or various other issues that you might find since it is a beta, it's not a full release. So if you want the most stable experience, you should still be using the latest full release of Gold Hen. However, if you wanna you know, try this out, then feel free to do so. Again, I'll leave Sistro's donation link down in the video description. So the final thing that I wanted to cover here in this video is of course the Flo's talk at Hexacon. So unfortunately, there wasn't anything new that was added here. He did do the talk a while ago, but it's only just been uploaded to YouTube. Uh, I think yesterday, yeah, one day ago. So it was only uploaded to YouTube yesterday. It's more or less the same talk that he did at the hardware conference, which we were pretty much expecting. Although he did say he would talk a little bit more about the kernel exploitation. And he did go into a bit more detail on that. However, there wasn't anything particularly new, nothing that we really didn't know about already in the scene. So just wanted to put that out there. So the talk has happened. You can access it now on YouTube. I'll leave the link down in the video description if you're interested in checking it out. Um, but just bear in mind that there's not anything particularly new in this talk that's, you know, some kind of revelation that's going to allow us to exploit the PS5 further based on this talk. But it's still an interesting talk anyway, so I'll leave it down in the video description. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Also, Lappy released a new version of um, PS4 Explorer. If you haven't checked that out, it's mainly just a bug fix and stability improvement. But, you know, I thought I would mention it here anyway. I'll leave the link to that in the video description as well. You can download it, of course, from the Homebrew store. And I think that's pretty much everything. So hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.